So, you're thinking about having a midlife crisis. Well, before you do, watch this video. All right, listen. I know that you have a lot of options for your midlife crisis, so I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to try and win your business to use the CRF 300L Rally as your tool to have a midlife crisis. So let's start with the basics. What is a midlife crisis? Well, in my opinion, a midlife crisis is when you get to a point in your life where all the things that you have to look forward to are dreadful. You know, when you're, when you're young, you have all these fun life moments to look forward to. You know, you're going to graduate from elementary school. You're going to graduate from junior high and high school. You're going to start dating. You're going to start driving. You're going to get married, perhaps. You're gonna have kids. And there's, go to college, graduate from college, get a job, um, maybe progress in your job, become better at it, or, or move up the, the ladder, whatever. There's all these kind of events to look forward to. And then you get to a point where the events you, you have to look forward to are, oh, I get to start having colonoscopies and getting diagnosed with some horrible disease because everybody's body falls apart or, you know, family members, parents dying and it's just kind of a bummer as you get older. And so I think there comes a point in our lives where we just kind of crave that excitement of youth again. You know, something to look forward to that is not dreadful. Something to make us feel young again. Something to bring excitement and danger back into our lives. And so, when you get to that point, and if you're watching this video, I'm presuming you are at this point, you have a few options. That you can go with the classics, buy a sports car, have an affair, quit your job, start a new career, become an artist, start a band. I don't know. There's, there's a lot. And most of these options do bring with them an element of danger, an element of excitement, um, you know, probably the potential to make you feel young again um, but they also have potential downsides so let me go over some of these say you're leaning towards a sports car well this the, the amount of money you're spending on a sports car is going to differ wildly you know I, I had a friend recently who say had been saving up literally for 35 years so that he could go and buy a brand new Corvette cash I mean it was like and it was a nice one it was like the I think it had 12 cylinders 200 grand I mean it was like the raciest fastest coolest looking Corvette that he could find and I apologize I don't know the the details of it anyway so he bought this car his dream car that he's been dreaming about since he was 17 years old well not that particular model obviously but dreamed about buying a new Corvette since he was 15 years old 17 years old whatever and um, he bought it and then you know he was 53 I think when he got it something like that and it was super low to the ground <laughs> hard for him to get into he babied the thing washed it three times a day would Anytime he had to drive anywhere, he'd take his, you know, Corolla because he didn't want to have anything bad happen to his dream car. He would uh, drive it slowly, five miles under the speed limit around his neighborhood to show it off. And eventually got tired of it because, you know, it wasn't fulfilling his dreams. It didn't 
suddenly turn him into an awesome rock star. And so he sold it. I'm sure at a, a, a huge loss. Um, so, that's a long way of me saying that, in my opinion, all cars become cars. You know, you get a fancy new car, at least anytime I've bought a new car, I'm excited about it for a minute and all the new features and it's great. And then I drive it for a couple weeks and pretty, and then it's just my car because I've driven so much in my life that, you know, I just kind of go into autopilot and I'm not sitting in my car every second going, oh my gosh, this is just heaven. I finally have my dream car. Maybe that's, maybe that's not you, but that's me. Maybe there are people who get their new car and they really are just in a constant state of ecstasy every time they get in it. So, um, so price on a sports car, anywhere from five to $200,000. More, really, if you're really crazy. Look at all these cows. So, my opinion on sports cars, thumbs down. Alright, next option. Let's go with having an affair. Alright, so the pros of having an affair, I suppose, in terms of a midlife crisis, it adds adventure, excitement, probably makes you feel young. Um, I've never had an affair personally, so I'm just kind of speculating here, but, you know, obviously, if you're a man and you've got hormones still kicking or you want to revive them, the idea of an amorous affair has its appeals. Um, cost. Well, I suppose potentially in money it could be fairly inexpensive, but it could also be catastrophically expensive. If it goes south, you get caught, cost you half of your money that you've earned for the last 30 years. Um, breaks your wife's heart, breaks your children's heart, gives your children uh, trust issues, daddy issues, whatever, and you're left with a nagging sense of guilt for the rest of your life. Or maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't feel guilty. Maybe you're a sociopath. I don't know. Again, I, I can't relate to that one, but I can say that the cost, whether you get caught or not, for me is way too high on the affair. So thumbs down on having an affair. All right, what else we got? We've got quitting your job, following your dream of being an artist or an author or a rock star. You're just gonna say, screw it, I'm throwing all caution to the wind. I, I personally have never met anybody who that's worked out for. I mean, I've, I've, I've known people who have changed careers fairly late in life, and it's worked out great for, so, you know, I'm not saying don't do it in terms of like, okay, I hate my job. Um, I, I have a friend right now who's going, he's 47, I want to say, and just finishing up nursing school. You know, by all means, pursue something new if, if you feel like you should. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, trying to recapture your youth by becoming a rock star or, you know, an artist and, and throwing all responsibility out the window to do it. Um, again, I'm, I'm not judging anybody who, do, who chooses this path, but to me, the cost is way too high. I've actually thought about doing this before, <laughs> um, but, you know, I have a mortgage, I have kids that I want to be able to help go to school. I want uh, my wife to not be fretting for her security and all that stuff. So, too high for me. So, the quitting your job and following your dream is, the cost is a little too high for me at this point. And I know that's super Debbie Downer to say don't follow your dream, but just be realistic about it. Um, at this point in your life, if, if you're 20 and you're think and you want to go follow your, <laughs> your dream of being a rock star, um, give it a go by all means. Um, if you're 49 and you want to be a rock star, sorry, here's, here's the cold, hard, um, slap of reality in your face. You're not going to make it. Um, unless you do. <laughs> Prove me wrong, I guess. Um, 
All right, what else we got? I don't know. We we have motorcycles. That's we'll, we'll get right to the point after this ridiculously long segue. So, motorcycles. Danger. Check. Excitement. Check. Making you feel young. Check. Uh, making you feel cool. Whatever. Check, check, check. Um, but the problem for me with a street motorcycle, I daydreamed about a Harley. You know, very, very um, cliche midlife crisis to have. Get a Harley as yeah, your first motorcycle in your 40s. Um, go out and buy the, you know, buy a $28,000 Harley. Um, bling it out with all of the, you know, $100 knobs and spikes and skulls, whatever. Um, but the problem with, with that for me is I've never really owned a motorcycle. I mean, I, I, I had one when I was like 13 that I don't really count because I bought it like at a yard sale for 50 bucks and it barely ran. It was called a Chaparral. I don't even, I'm sure that company doesn't exist. I don't know where they were made, but I would work on that for three days, drive it for 10 minutes and it would break again. Um, so yeah, for all intents and purposes, I had never owned a motorcycle. So if you're like that, never owned a motorcycle and you walk into a Harley, shop with all of your hard-earned middle-aged income you know and do the cliche thing then that's great but for me and i and i again no judgment i almost did this um but i i recognized before i did that it would be to me like my friend's corvette was to him i would have this thing i i did this with a my dream guitar i bought i went out and bought a three thousand dollar um, Les Paul standard gorgeous guitar and you know and I'm not a great guitar player I'd get out I, I, I strum chords and play stuff on my acoustic mostly but um, I'd always dreamed about having a Les Paul guitar so I go out and I buy the the one that my guitar playing friend tells me is the best one so it's it's the it's the $28,000 Harley of of guitars in my mind so uh, i bought it i'd open up the case and look at it every once in a while dust it with a, a little cloth maybe hook it up to an amp and play a little something every once in a while and just kind of drool over it but you know i didn't want to scratch it um didn't want to hurt it and so i'd put it back in the case and then i'd pull out my acoustic and you know actually play stuff so uh spoiler alert i ended up selling that to pay for my first uh, motorcycle but anyway so so yeah the problem for me with buying a Harley is that I wouldn't ever drive it it would be too fancy too nice and I didn't really want to drive on the street seeing the state of traffic these days with people drifting off the road while they're texting on their phones and it just seems like it's getting worse and so I coming from a, a non motorcycling background I didn't want to spend all my time on the road I don't have the the decades of reflexes and and muscle response and all that kind of stuff, muscle memory that someone who has been riding their whole life have, and so I didn't trust myself to be safe on the road. So for me, doing the cliche Harley Davidson thing just didn't seem like the right way to go for my midlife crisis. So what do, what do I do? I think about it, I daydream it, I don't really know, until I watch, um, I stumble on The Long Way Around, you know, the, the show with Ewan McGregor and Charlie, I can't remember his last name, Charlie, sorry Charlie, uh, Ewan McGregor's friend, Charlie. Um, they, they go around the world on adventure bikes. And that sparks this, you know, excitement and daydreams and, oh, I want to be an adventure rider. And so I start looking at adventure bikes. And of course, you know, after watching that show, I'm looking at the big ones. I'm looking at the BMWs like they had. Um, I think they had 1150s, maybe, maybe, I, I think they had 1150 GSs. Um, anyway, whatever they were, they were massive, big. And even watching the show, you know, every time they'd crash, they, they'd, both of them would have to pick it up and they just looked miserable. So, 
you know, first I'm thinking, oh, if I'm going to do these massive trips, I'm going to need a big bike. But the more I thought about it, realistically, I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a motorcycle rider. I don't have experience with all this stuff. I'm realistically going to be by myself most of the time. So a big one's not a great idea. So I start looking at little bit smaller ones, like the, you know, if you if you're just new to the adventure bike market and you start looking up good reliable mo uh, adventure bikes, you're going to see. KLR 650 and you're going to look in your classified ads whatever those are in your area and you're going to see 20 of them and they're going to be cheap um, and so you're thinking oh that's the way to go I'm going to get a KLR 650 in fact I almost got a KLR 650 and I I had a gun safe that I, I don't have any guns I just had it for a business that I was doing I, I stored documents in it it was fireproof um, so and I hadn't needed it for a while and this guy was going to trade me his KLR 650 um, along with some money from me for his uh, for this gun safe that I had so and then I you know I just got talking to him and I said you know when you tip it over how hard is it to pick up and he thankfully he was honest with me he's like honestly it's not easy you know he's like that's why I'm selling it I want to get something smaller it's easier to pick up on the trails and this this guy had a lot more experience well I, he I didn't have any experience, but he had a lot of experience. And so I'm thinking, okay, if this guy who's been riding motorcycles for decades wants to get rid of it because it's too heavy, what am I doing looking at it? So I kept looking and eventually bought a XT250. I'm short, five foot nine, short legs. Um, and I finally decided on an XT250 and it was just an awesome bike to start riding on. Um, it's an awesome bike to keep riding on it. I still still have one. Um, I sold the one that I originally bought when I got this um, CRF, but I regretted it so I ended up buying another one. So I have an, another XT250 in my garage now. Anyway, awesome bike, great if you're shorter. Um, great to learn on very accessible you can flat you know if you're my height I've got like a 29 inch inseam you can easily flat flat foot it with both feet and and it was awesome um, and the only part that I found it lacking in as I as I got better and better on it is is some of the adventure things. I'd, I'd go out and camp on it and, it, and it worked totally doable. People travel around the world on these things, so it's totally doable, but I, I didn't like carrying a gas can if I was gonna go more than, you know, 150 miles on it. I didn't like um, that, I could, that, that I had a hard time going over about 60 miles an hour without feeling like the engine was gonna throw a rod. Um, and you know the the wind, the wind production was mediocre with an aftermarket uh, windscreen on it. Anyway, there were just some things in terms of the adventure side of it that I that I found lacking as I as I kind of pursued my my um, desire to do adventure riding. And so, of course, I ended up with this Sierra 300L Rally that I'm trying to sell you on right now for your midlife crisis. Um, and it has been amazing. It's light enough that I can, I've only had to pick it up once. Um, I tipped it over in some super deep soft sand that got the better of me um, and it wasn't too bad, but just, just the, the nimbleness of it and the, the range of it to to do the longer adventures that I like to do. Wanted the range, wanted the ability to get on, on the highway when I need to. This this can cruise along at 70 miles an hour with, with no problem and it's just great for adventures. So when, I, when we put it in the, uh, when we compare it back to back with our other options for midlife crisis, um, cost. 
you know, I, I paid a premium for this because I got it um, when everybody wanted it. None were available, so I, I, I found one that somebody dropped out of at a dealership that was, you know, an hour and a half away from me. Paid a little over $8,000 for it out the door, which is steep. Um, but again, in the context of a midlife crisis, not that bad. And I've, I've put, I don't know, five or six hundred dollars in, in uh, upgrades on it or mods. Um, and I may put a little bit more. I'm, I'm slowly getting swayed towards the idea of upgrading suspension. So, you know, that would be another thousand dollars probably. So yeah, there's a cost to it, but juxtaposed with a sports car or a, an affair which ruins your life or quitting my career and starting something new, <laughs> losing all my income, whatever, the, the, the cost when you compare it to other midlife crises is, in my opinion, very low. Um, so, and does it make me feel young? Yes. Does it make me feel excited? Yes. Is there an element of danger? Yes. Um, could I get hurt? Yes. I probably will at some point. I mean, obviously it'd be nice to never get hurt, but, but the fact that I might and the potential is always there is part of the appeal, you know? It's like part of the appeal of having an affair, I presume, is, you know, this you're getting away with something, you might get caught. There's there's a, a, an aspect of danger there. Or, or if you, yeah, I don't know, go skydiving or something like that. It's, you know, you're, you're looking for that adrenaline and it's there on a motorcycle. It's there on an adventure bike, especially if you're getting off road and you're challenging yourself every once in a while. I, obviously I haven't been today, but I've been getting braver as time goes on on this bike. Um, so yeah, the danger's there. Um, the excitement's there. Do I feel excited every time I get on it? Yes, I do. I mean, <laughs> like I like I said, in a car, I wouldn't. I'd have a sports car and it would be exciting for a little while. Um, and then I think it would just wear off and it would be a car for me. But that hasn't happened in the three years that I've been riding uh, dual sports. I have just, every time I get on it, I'm excited. And um, yeah, it's not like every second is this adrenaline rush that, you know, I'd probably have a heart attack at my age if, if I was just constantly on an adrenaline rush the whole time. But when I'm not having that adrenaline rush, I'm having this zen, joy, freedom, <laughs> all the things, all the, all the things that you probably see in a motorcycle commercial. It's freedom, it's, it's, I don't know, peace of mind, it's therapy. It's all those things for me and it could be for you too. So yeah, that's my spiel. If you're gonna have a midlife crisis, one, don't fight it, embrace it, go get yourself a motorcycle. Unless you don't like motorcycles. Then go do something else and just try not to ruin your life and your bank account in the process. And that's my spiel. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you feel like it. Ride safe.